everybody, I'm Sarah. Welcome back to Overkill Reviews. Today, I'm reviewing my most mainstream metal release yet. That is the brand new studio album by Dragon Force. This one is called Reaching Into Infinity and it comes out via Ear Music Today. Okay, so I have to kick off this review with a confession. I've never really taken Dragon Force that seriously. In 2007, when Guitar Hero came out, I used to love playing that with my girlfriends. We would get super drunk and play through the fire and flames on expert level, and we would all fail miserably while laughing hysterically. But I've never really listened to them since then because I always equated them with Cheeto Fingers and Xbox. Now, it's not to say that I still do. I've listened to this record many times in preparation for this review, and to be honest, I find it in equal parts fun and disappointing. So let's listen to it. Okay, so to kick things off, we're gonna go into track two because track one is an instrumental lead in. Track two is called Ashes of the Dawn. Here it is. intro, the band has already demonstrated what they're good at. It's big, it's epic, it's fun, there's tons of backing tracks, it's fast, it's pretty much everything you expect from power metal. And Dragon Force is also really good at the chorus, which you'll hear now. So there you go. You guys know what you're getting into. This is epic power metal. It's kind of like Brucey and Halford, and that's that's good. It's, it's a good time, and Dragon Force is a good time. And it wouldn't be power metal without the solos. Goddamn 42 seconds is a long solo. This isn't Yigni fucking Malmsteam. I'm not shooting arpeggios out of my guitar at a fucking flying dragon in the sky. And that is the problem with Dragon Force. And it's the problem with literally the entire record. The band doesn't know how to rein in all the things they're good at and make them into something that leaves you wanting more. Speaking of which, here's the intro to the third song, Judgment Day. Have you ever turned on a song and immediately your hackles are raised because you don't understand, or you might understand why you hate it so much? That's what this song intro did for me. This sounds like the intro to a dubstep song, and I don't know if the band's doing it because it's part of the experimental stuff that they claim is all over this record in the press release, but for me, it's a bit of a psych out, and maybe that's exactly what it's for. That said, they quickly jump out of it and they go back to big and ridiculous. I feel the magic burning deep inside of me. Fuck, this is Dragon Force. This is what it is. It's big, it's fun, it's written for a festival, not unlike Vakken, where everybody has decided to get incredibly drunk at 10 o'clock in the morning, has probably ripped off some of their clothes, and is running around the mosh pit. This is literally a band for the dude who goes to Vakken, wears a kilt, and makes out with his girlfriend while there's a wall of death coming at them. Speaking to that wall of death, it's gonna slow down immediately when you get to this interlude. Lord, the 
keyboards, they're all over the place and it's fun. So if you're into bands like Stradivarius and Dream Theater, then this is gonna float your boat. Shit, I almost forgot. You need your daily inspirational moment because you can conquer the stars. We reached for the moon, we conquered the stars. We cried for the tears of yesterday. Still strong to the end, till we'll meet again. the sing-along. So the last time that I went to see Blind Guardian, who I think is the best power metal band in the world, I went to two different cities to see them, and of course they played Valhalla. And for both cities, that song, the chanting went on for five minutes minimum, while the entire crowd was singing. And that is exactly what Dragon Force is trying to create with a song like this. There's gonna be a bunch of drunk assholes singing, and you're gonna have the time of your life if you're cool enough to play along. The album continues like this for some time, and that's the thing about European power metal. It's big, it's fun, it's meant to be sing-along to, and it's very polished. This is music that is inspired by the likes of Accept, Scorpions, Dio, Rainbow, Malmsteen, bands like that. And the music that's come from that entire movement tends to be very operatic, and for a lot of American and Canadian fans, that means cheesy. This is the musical equivalent of Jerry Seinfeld's The Puffy Shirt. Case in point, here's track seven, Midnight Madness. We will fly tonight towards the angels. See a star shine bright into the sky. We will stand tonight and live forever. We are the masters of the stars and of all time. So Jesus Murphy, this is where things go full puffy shirt. And when I say puffy shirt, I mean that it's going too far cheese. And Dragon Force has this problem that I mentioned earlier. They have a tough time reigning in their solos. They have a tough time reigning in their vocals. They have a tough time reigning in their goddamn song lengths. And right now on track seven of the record, I'm starting to get a bit tired. And I did listen to this album almost 10 times all the way through. And I always found that I started getting exhausted around this track, which is too bad because for all intents and purposes, it's actually a pretty fun song. Now to return to the point about album lengths, there's something to be said about filling up space in a good way. So take a US power metal band like Omen, whose record battle cry is around 36 minutes. It's a brilliant 36 minutes. Or you could contrast that with a Doom record like Reverend Bazaar's So Long Suckers, which is literally almost two hours long. Both of them have wildly varying album lengths, but they both are filling up the space with something that is different, that is fun, that is unique. And I think that that's the main problem that Dragon Force really is suffering from. So again, Dragon Force is going overboard with self-indulgence. And I know a lot of people won't agree with me on this because their previous two records, which were 2012's Power Within and 2014's Maximum Overlord, are their shortest records. But for someone like me, who is trying to take the band seriously and get into their discography, I'm still overwhelmed by the sheer length of the album. This record itself is around 50 minutes, it has bonus tracks, and by the end of it, I'm almost bored, and that is a horrible way to get into a new band. So. Now I'm tired, and now I'm being hit with a goddamn 11 minute long ballad. I know that I made my feelings very well known in the Crystal Viper review that I don't like ballads. Don't fucking like ballads. 
But I actually think that this song is great. And I think that if there's anything that this band has really improved on, it's on their ballads being powerful, more variant, and not simply saccharine. The problem with their earlier ballads, including the song Trail of Broken Hearts, Dawn Over a New World, or even 2008 Starfryer from Ultra Beatdown, they were all just suffocating in sugar. And I don't really like that, but this song, it's got a great chorus, it's soaring, and it's actually really well written. I like this. There's nice vocals, there's great guitars, everything's working together, it's soaring, there's emotional swells. And then all of a sudden they integrate death metal vocals and everything goes sideways. I don't know what it is about death metal vocals with Dragon Force, I really don't think that this section works. And I know that it's meant to be directly homage to Death, because Death has this hyper-technical style while they're growling. And incidentally, there is a cover on the special edition of this CD of Death's Evil Dead, which is from their fucking masterpiece Scream Bloody Gore. So this review is getting too long because the album is too long. Uh, I'm getting tired of it, and I think that we should talk about what that means in the verdict. Here is the long and the short of it. The press release for this record says, and I quote, for their seventh studio album, Dragon Force has opened up their sound like never before, capturing the fierce, forlorn, and fun with both menace and melody. That said, yes, there is good pacing on this record. I think that the band has worked to integrate a little bit more differentiation in terms of time signatures. They do a little bit of experimentation, but the problem with the experimentation is some of it feels really ham-fisted. There's the weird dubstep -y intro, which I don't think works. There's the death metal-y vocals, which I also don't really think work for the band, but there's also a really great ballad, some excellent songwriting. There's a whole bunch of fun solos. Like, there's stuff going on here that I like. All that being said, if you're a fan of Dragon Force, then you're probably gonna really like this album. The direction that they've been taking in their last two records is to consolidate a bit, to trim off a bit of the fat in terms of the song timing, and to integrate a little bit more differentiation, and they've done all that with this record. So, you people who don't get Dragon Force, but you like things like Malmsteam, or you like Blind Guardian, or you like Omen, or you might like Brockus Helm, or some other amazing US power metal like the wonderful Lord Weird Slaufeg, you probably aren't gonna like this either, but I think you'll be able to appreciate the technical proficiency that is so deeply embedded in this band that they literally can't stop themselves from making six minute long guitar solo ballad, just dragon fighting songs. It's kind of cool. The Dragon Force is doing something and they've made themselves into a fucking worldwide institution. And as much as you wanna hate on that, you really shouldn't. Because this record is to me deeply conflicted, but there's a lot to appease fans, I'm giving it three skulls out of five here on Overkill Reviews.